and let's go racing here at Knoxville. Only the best go three of It is showtime at Williams Grove Speedway. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here at Eldora Speedway, it's showtime! Yes, you got them for a rip. Often imitated, never duplicated, the greatest show on dirt, the world. It's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy, because ladies and gentlemen, it's showtime! Set to do battle for 30 laps, the green flag is waving. Hello again, it is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. Talking sprint car racing, our favorite time of the week, and we are so glad that you have joined us. Great, great week of sprint car racing, and we're going to break it all down. I'm Steve Post. My co-host, Aaron Evernham. How are you, Aaron? I'm good. How are you? Fantastic. Doing really, really good. Good stuff. Great weekend in North Wilkesboro. We're all home. We got great racing at Millbridge the next couple of mm -hmm. nights. Uh, sleeping in my own bed. It's all good. <laughs> Everything is good. Everything is good. Yes. Yep. So when the circus good. comes to Charlotte. The circus comes to Charlotte. No yep. Doubt we got about the charity everything. events. Got yep. all the things. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, everybody. Yeah. This week, like, and, and it's like you hear it, like, like, from folks in Knoxville, and you hear it, like, speed weeks and stuff like that it's like you love these weeks yeah but then you get to the point I, I i'm at the point where it's like okay there is no more space for time <laughs> yeah no yeah. it just is and it's, it's it's a great problem to have it is a great problem to have but still it's like oh my gosh so uh, it's all good it's all good uh let's get into our hefner racing product hot topics two words <laughs> kyle larson no let me correct that kyle freaking larson yeah. three words yeah Single-handedly, we have the most incredible all-star race experience going on at North Wilkesboro, and Kyle Larson single-handedly in the second yes. half of that race just ruined every, I mean, it's what you desire to do as a race car yeah. driver. Stunk the show up beyond belief. It was unreal, okay? Couple of good now. Well, one good thing, uh, Caitlin got back out. Now she's back. Man, on the, she jumped right back she in. She jumped right back in. Now yeah. they got T-shirts too. I do yeah, like the new they ones. Got, yeah. the, the new shirts look good. Yeah. So what's she the the um, shotgun sweetie? Yeah, shotgun, shotgun sweetie. sweetie. What is it for a million a million reasons or million something? A million reasons yeah. to come back. I'm back. A million reasons to come back. So you can go to Kyle Larson's page and get your shotgun yeah. sweeties thing. I was on the front stretch with MRN. And she comes over the wall, and I'm like, oh, boy. And then the next thing you know, the crowd's just like, and they handed her one. And I'm and so I'm talking to Kyle, and I'm I'm hoping, you know, Kyle starts to go, she can't get it open. And I'm like, I really was hoping Kyle would do a little play-by-play. -play. And then Ryan's in the air. He says, you're going to have to call this one. And so I actually called the shotgun standing there next to <laughs> Kyle, called the shotgun. Was I great. was impressed, too. She didn't do like a James McFadden. No, no, no. She, she doesn't got, well, miss no, a lot. She yeah. didn't miss a lot. She, there was a little bit of swirl well, at the that end. that added effect. But that added effect, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, so Caitlin is back. So that was the best part of the second half of the uh, race. Honestly, it was. Yeah, it was great. I mean, I, I will say this. I will say this. Seth, Kyle Larson, and, and, and I am a fan of excellence. There were times in the Jimmy Johnson era of NASCAR where everybody hated it, and I loved it. Yeah. Not that I was this huge Jimmy fan, but there are times you like to see somebody clicking on all eight cylinders. Yeah. And that's what we had with Kyle Larson. I respect that so much. I respect Kyle and Cliff Daniels and everybody on that team. Okay, we're going to have a pit stop. Well, maybe they'll. No, they were the first car off in pit Yeah. Run. Yeah, no. Well, so. And I thought it was neat, too. You know, obviously, Kyle wins all the time. Yes. And that was pure excitement when that checkered flag. You could hear him on the radio when he hugged Cliff Daniels. Like, that, that yeah. was pure well, emotion. Yeah. Um, so, Friday, he won. Kim Kuhn had Victory Lane interview with the Truck Series, and she says, are you ready for the whole Victory Lane thing? He says, I don't even know where I need to go. He was not aware of the elevator to the roof. And he said, he said, like, after the truck race, that's the most, ex that's the neatest Victory Lane experience he's been to. So, so much so, he wanted to go back again. And well, yeah, he obviously. He did. So, he got two trips to the roof. Um, but but to get this to get this to where we're at here, sprint car racing, and and Kyle's one of us. So let's not let's you know let's not pretend to, uh, pretend that he's not, and, and make this an all NASCAR show. April sixth, he outdueled Jonathan Davenport in a dirt late model to win Volunteer Speedway. Okay, May thirteenth, the track too tough to tame, Darlington, mm -hmm. in a NASCAR Xfinity Series car, won. Last Tuesday night. High Limit Sprint Car Series on a very tricky, technical yeah. Wayne County Speedway 
wore them out. Saturday, Truck Series, a very technical, old, worn-out North Wilkesboro Series. He took it to the Truck Series, and then he dominated the All-Star races. Third, he won Richmond and Martinsville. It's like you just get to the stage where I feel like every show you could come on and just rave about Kyle Larson. Yeah. I thought it was neat. I somehow had uh, Race Hub on last night, and they had this list of wins, and it included some sprint car wins in, in the yeah. High Limits race. And I thought, you know, a few years ago, we're, I'm not sure the sprint car world would have made it up on that list. We're getting uh, – we're there, there's a lot happening with the grassroots yeah. and NASCAR. Kyle Larson is the A number one drum Helper. beater yep. for it. But with, with Ricky Stenhouse, Alex Bowman doing stuff, on the asphalt side, I, I, I believe on the asphalt side, Josh Berry has done more yeah. – or racing than than so many. And Dale Jr. Dale Jr. Harvick now and, and yeah. Harvick with all with the Cars Tour and everything like that. There is a lot of really good stuff, and there's a lot of stuff going back and forth here. Yep. Um, the fact that, and, and again, it's the asphalt side of the equation, but on Friday night it was Cars Tour, or Wednesday night it was Cars Tour yeah. and ASA at the track. that the And, oh, by the way, place was mobbed. I mean, there's not a sprint car track in the country that wouldn't want that crowd that they yeah. have for that late model stock race. So. Um, it's good. It's really good. But I agree with you. There is right now so much respect for dirt. There is, I, I would argue there's more respect for dirt track racing now than we probably have ever seen I across the motorsports. Definitely agree. Yeah. So, so, and then Kyle's going to Indy. He's going to do that next year. I know. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's fun to watch. It really is. Anyway, speaking of fun to watch, and we're going to talk to this rascal, Donnie Schatz. Well, we saw it kind of coming. We saw it at Eldora. Yeah. It was like, oh, boy, that 15 car is not wallowing around in the middle of the pack. Mm-hmm. He's up there mixing it up. Well, objects in the mirror are now out the windshield with Donnie Schatz. Friday night, first win of the season, Attica Raceway Park. Saturday night, Sharon Speedway. Uh, second Career first win at Sharon. When you look at his numbers, it's absolutely right. First 15 races of the year, Aaron, zero podiums. Yeah. Last six races, five, five. podiums. Flying. It's almost summertime. Oh, man, oh, man. So we are going to talk with Donnie Schatz here on the program today. Last week, or was it two weeks ago, we talked to Mark Dobmeyer. Two weeks yeah. ago. And we said, that guy's going to go to River City. Now they got rained out last week, so he had another week to heal. <sighs> Dobmeyer picked up the yes. win River City. Isn't that so awesome? So happy for him. I, I really am. <laughs> it's just, the, we, and we talked about that in the interview, the, there's not a better person on the planet than Mark Dobmeyer. Just a great, he's great guy. He's been through a lot. And he's been through a lot. And then to just go there to his home track and just win the race. I just think that is so awesome. It is so awesome. Knoxville Raceway, Brian Brown picked up the win. We're going to talk to Brownie. Um, there's some signs of life with Brownie over the last yeah. month. There's some really good runs it's with high Brownie. High limit run. Yeah, yep. the high limit run. Uh, fourth at Eldora in the Let's Race 2 second yep. night. Brownie seems to have that thing pointed in a good direction. Back with Chad Morgan, his longtime yeah. crew chief, they were apart and now they're back. So we're going to talk to Brownie about all of that. And, and then crossing the scales at Knoxville and taking that right-hand turn. Yeah. I don't care how many times you do it. It's just magical to do it. And Brownie got to do it again on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Um, and then at Williams Grove, it was Freddie Raymer picking up the win. Yeah. And Freddie's had an interesting year. It's like there, there have been moments where it's like Lincoln has Lincoln, been, for sure. holy cow. Yeah. Who's going to run second? And then there are other times where he's like, okay. Um, but he got the win at uh, Williams Grove on Friday night. So good to see a little Freddie picking up the win there as well. It was a, it was a great sprint car weekend. And, 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 and we say that, and we'll talk a little bit about this at the end of the show. This coming weekend, I mean, if you can't I'm, – I'm telling you, and I love Dirt Vision and Flow, but go – to a sprint car race because there's one in your neighborhood. Yeah. I can just about guarantee you there's one in your neighborhood. Go to a sprint car race because it we're getting to that point where it's really, really good. So great, great stuff, that's for sure. And speaking of great stuff, Hefner Racing Products. HRP knows sprint car racing. Therefore, they know what works best for your team. No other accessory as far as trailers go and shop parts go can match the quality, performance, and design. Top trailer builders use HRP trailer accessories to outfit their stock and custom-built units, Aaron. Yep, and they're always adding, like, new cordless tool charging stations. They're sleek in design. They hold two cordless drills, impacts, or flashlights, and battery chargers. So it keeps clutter from your workbench. 
Roster includes something for every racer, team, trailer, and shop. So don't settle for anything less than Sprint Car Racing's number one accessories manufacturer. www.hrpracing.com. That's hrpracing.com. The Sage Fruit Hotline. The Sage Fruit Driver, Donnie Schatz, coming up next. The Outlaws are headed back to the Pacific Northwest. Join us for three action-packed nights of racing August 31st, September 1st, and 2nd at Skagit Speedway when the world of outlaw NOS energy drink sprint cars return for the Sage Fruit Skagit Nationals. Kickoff for the Sage Fruit Skagit Nationals begins Wednesday, August 30th with a pre-race party, live band, Sage Fruit Apple giveaways, and more. Then catch Donnie Schatz and the rest of the world of outlaws as they take on Washington's best sprint car drivers Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night. Details at SkagitSpeedway.com. Dirt Empire Magazine is the ultimate dirt track racing only magazine in the world. Featuring interviews, opinions, event photos, tech, and 100% racing action. Each issue includes late models, modified sprint cars, and more. Big event photos from the best photographers in the sport. And great one-on-one -on -one interviews with the top drivers as well as grassroots racers. Pick up a copy of Dirt Empire Magazine today at select tractor supply stores or other area retailers. Or get your subscription today at DirtEmpireMagazine.com. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation, presented by Sage Fruit. Let's go to the Sage Fruit Hotline, driver of that number 15 car, which is also a Sage Fruit sponsored car. Fresh off from not one, but two wins, Attica and um, Sharon Speedway this weekend. Donnie Schatz joins us. Hello, Donnie. How are you? I'm great, guys. Good. Good to catch up with you. How, um, let, let's talk a little bit about your season. We had the stat about podiums and stuff like that, the first 15 races and the last six races. Uh, it seems like to me you've got that thing pointed in the right direction. What have you guys? Uh, what have you guys picked up on here over the last month or two? Yeah, it's um, obviously there's nothing to brag about uh, from the start. You know, we just um, didn't have anything in the right places. Um, you know, we struggled. You know, every night I think good finishes were were outside the top ten for us. So it, it was. Uh, quite a bit of a struggle um you know there's there's a lot of factors there there's um you know we had a hard time getting some of our uh, our good engines back and we were we were hurting a few um with uh cooling issues um they had an internal problem that we were every time we run something on a big track we were having to to redo them to keep them going so uh, that just kind of put us in a little bit of a pickle, but our, we just our performance wasn't there. And normally the the bigger tracks is where we're seem to be a little bit better. But it, it all comes down to you know the way the air is. Um, and there's a lot of factors really, but um, you know the guys have um, not wavered in how they attacked it. They just kept kept on the straight and narrow, even though they had a driver that was uh, about a sliver short of a nuclear reaction. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're uh, we're back on track, which is uh, which is a good thing. Donnie, mentioning a sliver away from a nuclear reaction, how difficult is it after all the success you've had throughout your career to go through times where you're not getting the results you want? How do you how do you keep that competitive fire going and, and not get too frustrated? Well, you get frustrated. There's no way around it. Um, but then you start asking yourself, is now the time? Is now the time I just need to exit and and you hate to look at it that way, but, um, uh, man, there's things in life that happen and, and, um, things change. And sometimes I guess you, uh, some of us don't know when our calling is. And, um, you know, it's race is not something any of us have to do. We, you know, it's something we love to do. And I think it's still on a, on a bad day better than, than some of the things, uh, people do for a living. So it's, um, you know, you, you question a lot of things. You know, I don't I don't know that I question myself by any means, but just question my position. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you're with a, a great organization um, made up of many people, and, um, you know, it takes more than one person to be frustrated to, to get things fixed. And, you know, Tony was frustrated, Scuba was frustrated, Ron Shaver's frustrated, all of our partners are frustrated, so... Um, you know, it's just sometimes you just can't get things um, going the right direction, even putting in 24-7, 365. But that's just the way this game is. It's, um, it's a difficult game, and, and um, it's not getting any easier. But um, it's, it's uh, 
more rewarding to be on the on the right side of it at times. And really, uh, you know, you have to appreciate both sides. You can't have one without the other. If we don't have uh, bad guys, we don't have good guys. Yeah, yeah. I, w- I actually heard a quote recently about um, you you appreciate companionship if you have a little lonely a time of loneliness. You appreciate love if you have a period where there's some hatred in your life and that sort of thing. So I think it does take that. But how you, you just mentioned rewarding um, and, and, and you talk about questioning where you're at is is a weekend like this. And I know you race car drivers and especially you, Donnie, you're looking you're looking to the next weekend. You're looking to Atomic. You're looking to Lawrenceburg. You're not too worried about last weekend. But how rewarding is it and confirming is it when you when you pull off what you did this past weekend? Well, it's really rewarding. It's, it was, you know, I can be honest with you. If I thought I was going to go win Attica Sharon last weekend, I'd have bet a million dollars on it that it wasn't going to happen. Wow. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, we, we normally run good at Attica, but, you know, I mean, today's environment, top three is good. You know, top five is good. So, um, you know, it, you got to have that. And, and it's, um, you know, but there's a lot of things that have, that have changed too. I, uh, I got to commend the series. Um, the series is, is obviously started checking some things um, pertaining to the rule book, and they've had some people that have done some things, and um, you know they're coming around nightly checking things, and it, I, I find it ironic that we're running better um, with all that as well. So, you know, it's um, I think it's there's a lot of factors, like I said earlier, that that play into it, and um, you, a person's got to have a great weekend here and there, but, it, you know, we're so far out of wanting to – or being a contender for the championship that, you know, it's going to take a lot of weekends like that to get back in the hunt because there were just so many of them bad nights um, that you can't, you can't erase. And um, These guys know that, um, you know, they've won 10 championships, so they know what it takes, and and uh, I think we've just had too many of them. But that doesn't mean we're, we're not going to – give it our best effort we're definitely going to do that but man it's gonna if we have a bunch of great weekends like last weekend we'll be able to get up there and and at least be competitive and get close donnie i want to talk to you about the competition level you've obviously won 10 world of outlaw championships a ton of success in the sport but i think one of your quotes after the race this weekend was talking about you know how spot on you have to be and to win with this group of people Compare the, the level of competition now to, to years ago when you first started. It seems like every year it gets better and better. Well, there's always been great drivers. I've always raced against great people, no question. You know, when you race against Steve and Sammy, but the dynamic has changed. You know, the, the, the amount of people that have good shocks and good cars and good motors used to be few and further between back then, and now everyone has it. You know, mm-hmm. the young guys that start out and the young kids that start out they're going to start out with virtually the same thing, if not better than what I have for a shock package and a, and a car package. And they hit the ground running where some of us have, have evolved through tire changes, um, all these things. And, you're, you know, we have a feel that we know worked, and we're trying to get to that because we know that that's what's going to help us. But, um, you know, there's an adaption you have to have there. And, um, you know, some, sometimes the things that happen – um, yeah, we all want to make changes for the better, but, but sometimes we don't. And, you know, right now um, we've had this tire change again. And, uh, you know, it's I'm not the tire company, so I don't know what their goal was um, here or there, but I, it's got the car stuck harder again on the right rear. Um, not so much on the left rear, but it definitely got the car stuck hard on the right rear. So, you know, it, you got to change everything you're doing again to, to try to adapt to that. And, um that's where the crew chiefs earn their money. That's where scuba, you know, it, you know, it's obviously taken us a little bit of time to get adjusted to that, but I feel like we have. We've, you know, come Eldora, we were more consistent. You know, we had it left the weekend with a couple of podiums, and, um, you know, Williams Grove was decent. So I think we're we're figuring out what feel it is we need and and uh, where we're at with that. So, But the, the level of competition is second to none. Um, the, the young guys that are out there today, um, they know no fear. They know no, um, uh, you know, tear up any equipment. There's, it's really at, at no expense, and um, that's just something that's not in my, not in my realm of how I do things. But you know, it's it's what we're a, a product of today. So you just have to be aware of it.
Yeah, no doubt. Donnie, I want to go back to something said in your last answer, and, and, and feel free to not elaborate if you don't choose to, but you talked about the series, uh, checking some things, and, and doing their due diligence. Is there anything further you want to elaborate on or, or, or not? I'm, and I'm cool with either because I, I always respect your, your, your take on topics like that. You know, I think we all know what, what, what the discussion's about. You know, there was a car that got caught with altering tires, and they can say they did it, they didn't do it, but the series isn't going to take the steps to penalize a car if they didn't do something like that. And I, I just think it's funny how some there's a lot of cars that haven't run nearly as good since, and next thing you know, we're checking engines more. And, you know, last weekend at Attica, they were coming around looking for traction control and magnets. I mean, all these things that uh, we know are out there, but yet when you sit and look at it, no one has ever got caught for any of these things. No one. They've never busted someone for traction control. They've never busted someone for motor. It just it, it doesn't happen. So um, now that we've actually had someone that, that has, has had a penalty or a, a tire altering thing, it's kind of kind of been an eye opener, really. Uh, to uh, maybe we're a little naive to, to what's going on here and there. I mean, we we all it's a small world. We all hear things. We all see things. Um, and I think they've. In the past, they've they've turned a blind eye on some of it, and and maybe I'm maybe I'm naive in thinking that, but um, right now they're not turning a blind eye, and and it's um, you know it's good to see. It's rewarding. I mean I'm I'm not gonna lie. We were after Attica. I seen the tech guy down at looking on the looking at the axle. I'm like, what are you looking for? The like a thickness in the axle? And he's like, no, I'm looking for magnets. Magnets for what? Well, magnets for traction control. I mean, there's there's all sorts of these gizmos that are out there, and um, obviously they're privy to it. So, you know, I'm just going to commend them for at least, uh, you know, trying to keep everyone honest because this is racing, and and um, there's, you know, there's always people trying to find ways to get ahead of another. Yeah, well, that's great to hear with, like, with the competition level and the money that's now in the line and, and the amount of sponsors involved. It's great to know that they're they're doing more. Donnie, speaking of money on the line, we're heading into the summer months, which now more than ever, there's more money to be had. You've traditionally just been strong in the, in the high money months, the, the month of money. Is there something to that? I, I mean, it seems like every year we kind of joke about how this is when you really come on. But is, but is, is, there, something, is there something to that, or is it just when you guys kind of gel and it's the tracks that work for you? I think it's just the mindset, Aaron. You know, it's the way I was raised. Um, you know, the way, you know, uh, when I, my upbringing, um, it, you, you raced because you, that's what you love to do. Mm-hmm. And when there was money on the line, you didn't think about, you didn't change the way you drove. You didn't change the way you attacked it. You just didn't, you didn't change the things you do just because the race paid a hundred thousand to win or 150 versus 10. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, that's just a mindset that's, um, it's hard to, you know, to adjust to you, if you're thinking about the money, realistically, I think your, your mind's in the wrong spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We all need the money. Yeah. We all, uh, you know, it's what makes the world go around, but to just sit here and say, it's all about money. It's all about money is, is just the wrong, uh, to me, it's the wrong attitude and it's the, the wrong philosophy when it comes time to being on that racetrack, you know, the last 15 laps from a, from a race that's, going to pay and there's going to be a race that pays a million dollars to win this year and there's one that's going to pay 250 and there's one that's going to pay 175 so i mean there's a lot of money on the line and yeah it gets a guy excited but yet you have to just put that in the rearview mirror when when those races come up and you're actually racing for them and a month ago i was sick to my stomach because i was thinking man the only way i'm going to get any of that money is if i go there and sell hot dogs and popcorn in the stands <laughs> because we weren't we weren't exactly in a position where we could feel real confident about going to these places and and having a, a fighting chance at racing for that. I kind of felt like we were a field filler, and, um, and that's just being honest. So um, now I feel like I have a fighting chance at that, and and I think, um, you know, that mindset that, that I've been raised with is, you know, it's been very good to me. It's, it's won me multiple Knoxville Nationals and Kings Royals and, and uh, Williams Groves National Open. It's, it's put us in a great spot in those races. So um, I'm definitely uh, feeling a lot better 
about my opportunities and chances come those races, and um, I'll just bring my nieces along so, so they can sell popcorn and hot dogs <laughs> to help out. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to keep you behind the wheel, I think. Uh, and, and I actually was watching Eldora, and I was thinking about that. As you were running up at the front of the field, I said, oh, boy, we're st- it, it, it's, it's, it's starting to sort it all out. Donnie, we truly appreciate your visits all the time. We really appreciate your candor and just uh, just uh, just the, 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 what you share with us here on Wing Nation. Congratulations on the successful weekend, and uh, thanks for joining us here on the show. You bet, guys. Thank you. There we go. Donnie Schatz joining us on the Sage Fruit Hotline. Wow. Um, wow. I don't even, I mean, we need to step away. <laughs> Brian digest. Brown is coming up because I don't even know. I mean, you want to talk about Donnie Schatz unedited, unplugged. Just, yeah. wow. Never ever get sick of talking to Donnie Schatz, but man, that might be one for the ages right there. Absolutely. Holy cow. Well, I bet you, and and I'll guarantee you we're not the only one, and I bet you there's already conversations right now going on about, did you hear what Schatz said? Mm -hmm. Uh, Great, great stuff. As always, we appreciate Donnie. Such, such a credible, good person. Really, really cool. Uh, Speaking of credible good guys, Brian Brown. He got to make that right-hand turn at uh, Knoxville after crossing the scales. We're going to talk to Browning next. The Outlaws are headed back to the Pacific Northwest. Join us for three action-packed nights of racing August 31st, September 1st, and 2nd at Skagit Speedway when the world of Outlaw NOS Energy Drink Sprint Cars return for the Sage Fruit Skagit Nationals. Kickoff for the Sage Fruit Skagit Nationals begins Wednesday, August 30th with a pre-race party, live band, Sage Fruit Apple giveaways, and more. Then catch Donnie Schatz and the rest of the world of Outlaws as they take on Washington's best sprint car drivers Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights. Details at SkagitSpeedway.com. The National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum's newest exhibit will be our track tribute to Williams Grove Speedway inside the museum's main floor from April 3rd through October 2nd this year. You'll learn about the beginning of Williams Grove Speedway and the evolution of sprint car racing on the East Coast through eight of the iconic big cars and sprint cars that made up the history of Mechanic Birds Pennsylvania's Williams Grove Speedway. Plus, you'll see videos of historic national open sprint car races and other racing events that put Williams Grove on the map. That's the track tribute to Williams Grove Speedway, featured April 3rd through October 2nd at the only museum in the world solely dedicated to sprint car racing, the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum in Knoxville, Iowa. You know, I love sprint car racing because I I love and respect the competitors, the racers, because I love and respect what things mean to them. What, 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 how hard this is, how difficult this is. And we just got done talking with Donnie Schatz about the difficulties and then kind of coming out the other side. Well, I think there's some probably parallels yep. with our next guest, Brian Brown. A um, little bit of a slow start to the season, but over the last month, we've seen it coming along. We've seen it quicker, quicker, top tens, top fives. And on Saturday night, Knoxville Raceway got to stand on the front stretch in Victory Lane there and joins us on the Sage Fruit Hotline. Hello, Brian. How are you? I'm good. Just anytime you're on with you guys uh, on a Tuesday, you know you're you know you you had something good happen. So it's uh, good to be on with you guys. You certainly did, Brian. Am I accurate in the description of some of the challenges earlier this year and the progress culminating on Saturday night? Is 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 that a fair assessment of where you guys have been and what you've gone through? Um, yeah, maybe a little bit. Like I, I mean, I don't really feel like you know I've heard a couple um, so-called analysts. It says we've had a bad start. Um, you know, we went to Florida and had two top fives with the Outlaws, yeah, uh, right. you know, a, a podium, um, you know, and then, you know, we've had some good runs with high limit, you know, a couple hard chargers. Um, I would say more than anything, I feel like our qualifying hasn't really been up to what we normally had up to our standards and it's just kind of got us buried in the back of some races. And, you know, we've had to just pass a lot of cars, you know, whether it be the Outlaws or high limits. So, uh, this isn't easy, and um, you know, uh, you know, running the top five with outlaws aren't. It's not. That's not an easy task, especially for guys that just come and go and don't run with them full time, or even the guys that run with them full time. So, um, yeah, I don't really feel like it's been down, but I just feel like it's just been maybe a little bit of a struggle. But um, the whole while, you know, just because. You don't get the final result every night you maybe had hoped for. You have to look in the mirror and say, okay, 
is the program where it needs to be circumstantially did we go out late to qualify and we didn't qualify well and that got us buried or is our car bad or did the driver drive bad and i think you have to look at all those things and um yeah like so i don't think we've been horrible but i don't think it's been you know we're not having a um our best year to this point like and respect that answer, Brian. I really do. As one of those analysts, and, and uh, you sit behind the wheel of the car, you see the performance, and we see the results a lot of times. So I do like and I respect that uh, respect that answer. Brian, I want to talk about Saturday night. You know, you didn't start in the first few rows, but you made that look kind of seamlessly. Like you, 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 the car could go anywhere. You ran through the middle. And I want to talk about the track itself. Like looking at the race, the track was pretty wide for a regular Saturday night at Knoxville. How much does that help you pre- uh, prepare for later on in the season, even the Nationals? Yeah, it was very wide. Um, you know, and that was a good good note and good paying attention there that you were able to see that. Um, you know, it was wide in the heat. You know, I went out the very last car to qualify, and it was still uh, set, able to set quick time. And, you know, um, and in the feature, yeah, it's, um, you know, normally as it gets wide like that, and as the summer goes along, it, you know, you can tend to, you know, get used in tires and, you know, sometimes lay rubber. But uh, the, the track was was in great shape with a, with a very nice bottom and, and a nice top, and yeah, starting seventh, I was uh, wasn't a hundred percent confident I was just going to be able to blow through there and win just because you know you had guys like Kerry Madsen and you know you know Linton Jeffrey's been running real well there and and you had Austin McCarl and you had you know um, Aaron Wright so so basically the players that I knew I had to beat before I went to the races on Saturday we're starting in front of me. So it's like, how are you going to mow through these guys? And, you know, you get racing through there and you may have to race with Aaron for four or five laps and you may have to race with, with Austin for four or five laps. Well, the A main's only 20. So, you know, we had to make quick work of it, you know, and really my car could go all over. Um, it just seems that these tires seem to fit my driving style, maybe a little bit more than the old tires. And, you know, we've got our car, uh, really good. Chad's worked really hard, you know, uh, and we've built on the program we've had the last couple of years to make sure that not only can we be fast, you know, straight line speed qualifying, but more importantly, can how can our car act when it gets back in dirty air? And I think that showed Saturday that we could be maneuverable. And I think it showed at the high limit race on Tuesday at Wayne County, we started 26th and ran fourth. So you don't do that if your car can't maneuver, you know, in dirty air. So, uh, yeah, overall, it looked it looked probably a little easier than it really was from my perspective. And um, we come back here yesterday, and you know, and then we st- sat down and you know, and talked about. I don't feel like that I was perfect. I was probably a you know, six out of ten. And then late in the race, when I got behind traffic there, my car got a little bit where I was doing some things I didn't like. So uh, to beat those outlaws in a couple of weeks, we're going to have to ramp it up a little bit and get a little bit better uh, as the race goes on. And um, but at the end of the day, paid 5000 to win. We took that to the bank on Monday, and um, we got the, got to stand in victory lane. That was the most important part. No doubt. Really, truly is. You mentioned Chad. You and Chad Morgan, a lot of success uh, early on in, in your over the last few years. You guys went in separate directions the last couple of years. Back together now. Getting back together with Chad, and what has it meant to you as you two have worked on this, uh, on this, uh, on, on this car, on this project this year? Yeah, it's um, you know, me and Chad's <clears throat> our our desire to to win has never changed from day one. He's been with me, I think, coming on fourteen or fifteen years, and um, we're like brothers. And um, the biggest issues we had in the years past is when things didn't go well. You know, uh, our idea, my idea of what needed to be done with the car, and his idea of what needed to be done with the car were sometimes different different perspectives and. Um, when, when we would try to mesh those perspectives, that would become arguments. And then when arguments would just become fights and the next thing you know, we were arguing and fighting and carrying on, it's not productive for the team. So I feel like when he went different direction last year with Ayrton, Jeniton, and then I went different direction with Danny, we both went off and did our own thing, but both had success. He won races, I won races. And, you know, when Danny decided he wanted to stay home and, and be home more, uh, Chad and Ayrton went separate directions and, you know, me and Chad had actually probably been better friends when we weren't racing than even when we were. And, uh, whenever, you know, that the opportunity to, to get him back came, you know, I said, Hey, come on down to the shop. Let's have a chat. And 
let's figure this out. Let's figure out how to do this and not argue. It's too hard to do arguing. And let's use all of our energy to try to get better as a team and not argue. And uh, so far it's been great. Um, it's early, early in our remesh period. So um, we're just more importantly, I really don't care whose idea it is as long as we can work together as a team and, and figure out, you know, what it takes to, to, when we do have problems, what's the best scenario to fix it, not whose idea it is. Uh, sometimes it was like a jury. We're trying to argue each other's idea versus what really needs to be done with the race car. So, um, yeah, so far it's been good, and I uh, look forward to, to the rest of the year with them. Ryan, when you talk about the time that you and Chad went different directions and you both had success, now that you guys are back working together, is there a, a different level of respect knowing that without each other you guys still did just fine? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think sometimes, you know, you feel that, well, this guy doesn't really know what he's talking about or <laughs> Brian, you know, maybe his driving, he's, he can't drive anymore. Or maybe I, and I'm using that just as yeah. he's never yeah. said that, just using that as an analogy. And I think, you know, when you go different directions, you, you always are looking over at the car next to you. And especially if Chad's working on it, you know, of saying, oh, does that car, that car looks like it handles. And there's times that I felt like his car was handling better than my car. And I thought to myself, in the back of my mind, I thought, well, there was a guy that I thought, you know, didn't know as much as I knew, and his car is better than mine at this point. So I think when we got back together, it was just, you know, um, a good situation that needed to happen. We needed to go different directions to see how good we really had it. Mm -hmm. And um, meaning, like Chad said, he went to work for Ayrton, and all he was trying to do was build a program that was as good as mine. And and then the whole time in the back of his mind, he's like, there were some things I didn't like about Brian Brown racing, but at the end of the day, there's so much more that I do like. And like I said, it's, you're not going to find a more dedicated, focused, all he thinks about racing. He goes, he works here at the shop. He goes home and watches racing. He, he wakes up in the morning, he's thinking about racing. And as a crew chief, uh, you know, as the owner and the driver, that's what, what really more can you, can you ask for, for your crew chief? And this racing is a big puzzle. You know, we have great other workers, you know, Justin Lauer has been with me for two years now. My dad, Robert goes, uh, late Hicks goes, all these guys are so important. Me and Chad sometimes get the limelight, but without those other key components, I've never seen a car win a race with a flat right rear tire or a tire that's out of balance or something that falls off. So those guys need just as much credit as we do because it's a big puzzle. And if you're missing a piece of the puzzle, um, it's not going to be complete. And uh, this racing right now is so tough. There are so many teams out there that can win on a given night that you have to bring your A game every single night or you will have you know, the results like you guys talked about earlier. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. that's fascinating stuff. Really, really a neat stuff. Brian, um, you have been one driver that yes, Knoxville has been home, but you're never scared to go to Pennsylvania. You're never scared to go out on the road to the World of Outlaws. The addition of high limits this year, and I know they've had some weather, but we've gotten three races in. What is it meant to to have more races? Obviously, there's more money out there, but but also more races where you get to go toe to toe with those drivers that are at the top flight of the sport nationally. What has that meant for you and your program and, and your expectations as you continue forward on that course? Yeah, I think it just keeps us sharp, you know, and, you know, and racing on a Tuesday night for really good money, you know, 23,000 the minimum you're going to race for, you know, and, and 50,000, you know, a couple 50,000 to win shows. I just normally on the week that you would just sit around and think about racing, you know, and think about what you need to do to your car, to make it better, you, now you have the opportunity to, to actually put that pen to paper, you know, uh, so to say, on on a Tuesday night for very good money against against the best in the world. I mean, other than a few drivers, uh, World of Outlaw drivers, I mean, this is the best of the best. And, you know, um, sometimes you don't even get that at the Outlaw shows because guys are running different directions. So what Brad and Kyle have done, um, I think it, it's great for our sport. Um, I think it's, you know, brought in, um, as much as the money is for our teams, I think it's brought a lot of eyes to our sport also. Um, you have to figure on a Saturday night, you know, um, there are so many options for people to go watch races and see races that, um, you know, watch races on pay-per-view or actually go to the track. It just gets split up above a bunch of different avenues. 
on Tuesday night, there's nothing going on. So you probably have every sprint car fan in the world that can't get there watching, along with guys like I'm sure Jeff Gordon and any anybody that's anybody Ray Abraham, you know, is watching our sport. And as those guys watch our sport, I think it just I feel like we have the best racing in the world. And I, you know, the more people we can wa- get watching it, uh, I feel like that then people will say, oh gosh, wonder where we can go see these guys this week. And that actually builds the World of Outlaw brand in itself. So I don't see it as a competition. I see it as, you know, if we can all work together, this can be better for our whole sport. And as a fan and as an owner, as a driver, that's really all you can ask for. As a guy who spends a lot of time walking the garage areas of NASCAR, there is not a weekend, there's not a day on the weekend, and sometimes there's not an hour that goes by when someone says, did you see that race Tuesday night, or did you see that race, or did you yeah. see what this one saw? Your point is spot on. Your point is spot on. This thing is catching a lot of eyeballs. It really, truly is. Brian, yeah, fun- and, I, and I feel like I feel like what Kyle, Kyle just doesn't get enough credit. I mean, he is the modern-day A.J. Fort, Mario Andretti, Tony Stewart, but I don't even feel like Tony brought as much eyes to the sport as what Kyle does. You know, all the NASCAR fans that are his, all the the sprint car fans that are his, and now all the late model fans that are yeah. his. So it's like he is what he's done and... for this. The modifieds. He could go down, in my opinion, as the most influential race car. Not best. I think he's the best race car driver in the world, ever. But he could go down as the most influential race car driver in the world ever. And I don't. I think that's a lot of people don't. I don't think give him that credit. And um, he's. I hate racing against him because he's so damn good. But. <laughs> It's um, he's he's definitely one of a kind, and and what I love about Kyle Larson, I've known that kid since he's been 12 years old, 13 years old. He's the same kid. He is yeah. the same guy. He hasn't changed one bit, and um, that's why I'm I'm probably more proud of him, of that versus anything he's accomplished on the racetrack. Here, here, yeah. man, oh man, I I can't. Uh, there, there's nothing more can be added to that. So the <laughs> final question I have for you. Are you still selling FVP batteries, Casey's General Store Pizza, and Andy's Frozen Custard? Are you still are you still selling all of that stuff, Brian? Oh yeah, yeah. We're we're definitely without those. You know, um, we talk about all these events that we get to go to and all the races we we get get to have have go to or you know get to go to as as a team. Um, we couldn't do it. You know, Casey's FVP, Andy's Frozen Custard, um, Impact Signs, Onings and Wraps. All of we have about fifty different partners on our team that. Yeah, without those guys, there's definitely no way, no how we could we could do it. And um, we're just lucky. We just hopefully hopefully one day I don't wake up from this dream because we are we are living a dream. I, I love this sport more today than I ever have, and and I'm I'm more more enticed and more just ready to just attack the sport than I ever have. And um, I can't wait to get to the rest of the year. A lot a lot of big money coming up, and hopefully some of it comes back to Missouri with us. Let's see what happens with it. I'm with you, too. My biggest fear is I wake up from the dream and would have to get a real job. I mm-hmm. hope that never happens. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Brian, I, know, I, I'm, I can't wait to fast forward to next year. I cannot wait for Kyle Larson to be in the Indy 500. Like, oh, my God. Me, I, just, me like, I just don't know. I don't think there's ever going to be a bigger story in motorsports. And, and, and then I, I mean, and, and Postman, you've covered it way longer than, than, than we have. But I just can't think of a bigger story than, than ever. I mean, uh, here you are, the, the, the – in our opinion, the the best race car driver ever yeah. going to the Indy 500. Like, what is going to be better than that? Thursday, yeah. he went and watched, and it was everywhere. Yeah. He he went with the sole purpose of watching, and you couldn't turn on anything without it being Kyle Larson's at India, Indy, and that's 375, 380 days before the race. I, yeah. it's good. I'm, yeah. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, like, if they give him enough preparation, he, oh. He, well, those he could, uh, damn well win. he could damn well win it. The McLaren team isn't too bad this year as of right now. Yeah, so he's so joining a, a nice group good, if they keep that. Operation. Yeah, pretty yeah. good operation. Yeah, top, and, and, there was like he, three in the right. top I mean, six. Doing, he's yeah. doing, it to, doing it to make sure he's he's prepared. And like I said, it's uh, gosh, I mean, I just can't can't imagine can't imagine what it's going to be like. And I I can't wait to tune in and and, and see it because it's there's our modern day AJ Foyt is going to see what he can do against you know the best in the world. Mm, yeah. Man, well, I, I, that's good stuff. Brian, always appreciate the time. Congratulations on uh, getting that win Saturday night. And I know there's many more headed your way, but we appreciate the time. All right, you guys take care. And like I said, um, look forward to talking to you guys again throughout the season. We'll do that. Sounds good. See Brian Brown joining us on the Sage Fruit Hotline.
Kate Stay Everham's with favorite driver. Kate Everham's favorite driver, <laughs> Brian Brown, joining us on the Sage Fruit Hotline. Stay with us. More Wing Nation in just a moment. The Outlaws are headed back to the Pacific Northwest. Join us for three action-packed nights of racing August 31st, September 1st, and 2nd at Skagit Speedway when the world of Outlaw NOS Energy Drink Sprint Cars return for the Sage Fruit Skagit Nationals. Kickoff for the Sage Fruit Skagit Nationals begins Wednesday, August 30th with a pre-race party, live band, Sage Fruit Apple giveaways, and more. Then catch Donnie Shop and the rest of the world of Outlaws as they take on Washington's best sprint car drivers Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights. Details at SkagitSpeedway.com. Dirt Empire Magazine is the ultimate dirt track racing only magazine in the world. Featuring interviews, opinions, event photos, tech, and 100% racing action. Each issue includes late models, modified sprint cars, and more. Big event photos from the best photographers in the sport. And great one-on-one -on -one interviews with the top drivers as well as grassroots racers. Pick up a copy of Dirt Empire Magazine today at select tractor supply stores or other area retailers. Or get your subscription today at DirtEmpireMagazine.com. You might have tuned in to the last <laughs> Wing Nation ever. Because Aaron and I are sitting here between Brian Brown and Donnie Schatz. Yeah. I just don't know what more we could get out of two of the premier drivers in the sport. Yeah. And their interviews were... Open, honest, sincere, yeah, thought-provoking, everything. <laughs> I mean, it's like... Emotional. Yeah, emotional, you name it. Unreal. I mean, we, we've sat here, Aaron and I have sat here in both interviews when the camera is away from us with our jaws, picking our jaws back up. Yeah. Brownie is, and, and, I, and I started the interview talking about him, his passion. We know what it means to him to mm -hmm. do that. And, and I even like the fact that he talked about some pundits are saying, I'm, hey, I'm, I'm there. Yeah. I'm one of those guys. But he's in that car, and he knows that car is rolling, and he knows that maybe it's one little aspect of it, but their performance is good. And I love the fact that he just comes on and, and, and corrects me on that. I just yeah. I respect that so much. I just think that that's just genuine, sincere, yeah. and, uh, and, and then he went from there to through the roof. Yeah. I'm telling you, this might be it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Gregor, you're going to have to find not only guests next week, you might have to find two hosts for the show. So, I mean, we might just be done, Aaron and I. We yeah, might, that's uh, it. We're good. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll get Ashley to do everything going forward. You guys take a break. There we go. All, all right. right. Well, there you go. Get all that right. all over yourself. Get that all over yourself. We'll see you, see you, you know, we'll see how that goes. Now, I mean, great stuff. We, it was just, it was phenomenal. Um, folks, if you like what you heard from Brian Brown and Donnie Schatz, share it. Share it. This, this is, you know, you, you used to be you had to advertise. Yeah. Now it's share. Now it's like, now it's subscribe. I mean, it's a cool way of doing things. We do it now. I don't understand any of it, but like, share, subscribe, and yeah. tell your friends. Just just put on your social media, did you believe what Brownie said or could you believe what Shot said? Yeah. And let her ride, baby, because what they said was phenomenal stuff. I mean, we're we're just lucky. We're just hanging on for the ride this time. That's for sure. <laughs> um, Sprint Car Hall of Fame birthday calendar. We are way long on this show because our – Drivers were just spectacular. Um, Sprint Car Hall of Fame birthdays. Monday would have been Gus Schrader. Later this week, Stevie Smith, Jack Gunn, Casey Luna, Jimmy Sills, Dick Berger, and Eddie Sachs. Today would have been the birthday of Joe James. Joe is a 1995 inductee into the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame. Born in Mississippi in 1925. Served in the Navy in WW2, the big one. After the war, did some drag racing, some hot rods, and discovered roadster racing, the CRA. Late 40s, moved to the Midwest, 1951, started to come into his own. 1952 was into his own. He was the Triple A Midwest champion, wins everywhere. And as we saw so many times in this era, November 1952 lost his life in a racing crash in San Jose. So, but he is forever enshrined, Joe James, in the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum. Aaron, we have got a busy, busy, sure busy. Do. I, I do want to give a shout out right now here. We're doing this, it's a Tuesday live show. Tuesday and Wednesday, Millbridge Speedway, the Extreme Outlaw Midgets. Now, if you can't be there, Dirt Vision has it. But if you can be there, be there. Um, the track is the, the the track is struggling with some some neighbors and some some parking. So if you go, if you can go, go support the track. Yep. And if you can go, be patient. Be patient <laughs> with Jimmy Live and everybody trying to park you in parking spots. Um, we need. We need to roll up our sleeves and, and get behind Millbridge on this on this deal. 
Uh, they've got some. They've got some neighbors that are not being good neighbors, and so we need to win this battle. And uh, so, so get out and support Millbridge tonight and tomorrow night, or if not, follow along on Dirt Vision. And uh, Aaron, look at the All Star schedule. My God. Yep, heading to Pennsylvania. Well, they start in Bridgeport on Thursday night. Williams Grove Friday for the Doug Esch Tribute Race, ten thousand to win, and then Saturday and Sunday, the old like- Port Royal Wykert Memorial. Twenty nine thousand to win Sunday. Yep. So it's ten grand to win on Thursday, ten grand to win on Friday, ten grand to win on Saturday, and twenty nine grand to win on Sunday. Yeah. This is this 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 sport is is in, and granted, you're never where you need to be money wise in no aspect of motorsports. But this is this is not high limits. This is not the world of outlaws. Yeah. This is the all stars with three tens and a twenty nine this weekend. Yeah. You know, it's fifty nine thousand dollars in winners' purses. Yeah. They're racing for this weekend. That's pretty darn good. Really good. Kudos to everybody there with the uh, with the Ulsters and the tracks as well. They're in Pennsylvania. They just put on some shows. World of Outlaw NOS Energy Drink Sprint Cars, Friday and Saturday night at Atomic Speedway. Uh, Monday, they're at Lawrenceburg. There is, I said this at the top of the show, there is a sprint car race at your yeah. local track. I, I, I about damn feel confident saying that because there's sprint car races everywhere. I do want to mention this one, though. Aaron, one of the things, one of the places that I shake my head at, I've Occasionally head up 77 up through West Virginia. Mm-hmm. And if you've head up there, you get up there at a certain point, you look to the left, and there is that big, yep. big, big old 5 eighths mile West Virginia Motor Speedway. Um, they restored it. Uh, was up and running a year ago or maybe two years ago. Uh, Fast Series is there paying 10 grand to win on Sunday. 10 grand to win. 10 grand to win there at West Virginia Motor Speedway. So uh, we got to support these racetracks. Yep. And if you're, if you're within the sight and sound of West Virginia Motor Speedway, uh, get there. It's on the cushion. It's great to support the cushion. It's great to support their vision. It's great to support flow racing. But if you can get your keister to a racetrack, get there. And who knows? If things turn, maybe you can buy a hot dog and peanuts from Donnie Schatz. <laughs> I don't think it's turning anytime soon. Or his soon. nieces. Or his nieces. There you go. Absolutely. We are busy and active on Twitter, on Facebook, our YouTube page. You can get Wing Nation gear at www.shopwingnation.com. That's shopwingnation.com. This week, Wing Nation TV, presented by Sage Fruit, Danny Dietrich. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah, there we go. Speaking of good interviews, Danny Dietrich joins Ashley and I Wednesday night in Canada on Rev TV at 8.30 Eastern Time, Friday, 12.30 in the afternoon on Mav TV. You can catch up with Danny Dietrich and our Wing Nation program. We sincerely, truly, and totally appreciate not only Donnie Schatz and Brian Brown, but the candor. Mm-hmm. And the discussion and the openness we got from Brian Brown and Donnie Schatz, both of them were off the chains today. And we do appreciate that. We don't take that for granted. And they come on here and they share with us a lot of things. And, uh, boy, I'm telling you what, I really sincerely appreciate it. And it makes me feel good about the little little conversation we get to have each week here. And yeah. it's pretty cool. That's for sure. So we appreciate those gentlemen from joining us, but, from, for joining us. But more important than all of that, thank you for joining us here this week on Wing Nation, presented by Sage Fruit.